Um, let, let me have a first, my first slide. Uh, this is a 62-year-old uh, male with history of hypertension, diabetes, and coronary artery disease. He had myocardial infarction uh, and uh, multiple PCI. So let's go through the story. In 2003, he has anterior wall myocardial infarction, STEMI, and PCI was done to the LAD with two uh, drug eluting stent implanted in his LAD starting at the osteum. In 2005, he was admitted with acute coronary syndrome and had a, a, a coronary angiogram that documented occlusion of the LAD stents and no intervention was done at that time. In 2016, he was admitted with acute coronary syndrome and CAS showed severe stenosis in the ramus and stenting was done with the long drug eluting stent to the ramus, extended to the left vein, and with that, the interventional cardiologist did jail the osteum of the LAD on top of those two stents. In 2018, he had a stroke with left hemiparesis and treated conservatively, resolved in two weeks with mild residual weakness. So he was admitted also to our vascular surgery service with left lower limb ischemia and documented on CT angio that he has severe, uh, total occlusion on his uh, left uh, superficial uh, femoral artery. And they asked at that time for cardiology consultation before revascularization. Re re so at that time, uh, I did review every coronary angiogram that the, he had from the beginning uh, uh, and what was the in uh, intervention. And I offered him to repeat the angiogram and see if we can do anything uh, and uh, uh, by intervention. Keeping in mind with that, uh, we discussed the uh, uh, option of bypass surgery, but due to severe per peripheral vascular disease, old stroke, uh, and uh, uh, also I did not mention that on uh, the echo also, this is his uh, electrocardiogram. You don't need about his labs, but uh, his echocardiogram showed segmental wall motion abnormality Akinesia of the apex and the septum and the, the mid anterior septum was hypokinesis in the inferior system, uh, septum. And not to uh, mention that there was suspicion of LV apical epi thrombus. So uh, uh, his ejection fraction was uh, reasonable. Carotid Doppler showed significant right internal carotid artery stenosis. But with that, he was considered a high risk for surgery. And I'm sure everybody will ask for viability. We were able to do dobutamine echo and did show viability in the anterior wall and the apex. So uh, 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 let me skip all the lab. This is the summary of his angiogram. His left main is patent stent, the ramus CTO in that stent, the LAD proliferative, total occlusion in stent uh, 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 CTO. The circumflex has osteal uh, lesion 50% and the RCA is dominant, giving collaterals. So this is the, uh, his uh, fixed picture. This is the instant occlusion and this is the total occlusion at the stent of the ramus. And uh, uh, this is the, the gelled uh, uh, LAD and this is the uh, RCA and with good collaterals. Go, uh, going to the uh, distal LAD, but not going to the instant total occlusion. So, uh, sorry, we need to we need to get this video running. Runny. Okay, yeah. So this is the uh, angiogram on the left side, and this is the spider view. And this is the uh, RCA view showing the collaterals. So anyway, uh, before I'll show you the intervention, any qu question uh, uh, or uh, comments before I proceed? Yeah, it was patient uh, choice to go for PCI or? Well, I told the, the patient is uh, really, uh, having severe angina, he said, even after the uh, standing of the ramus, he continued to have angina. I, I, if I felt, uh, I did not show you the labs, but the, even in the hospital, his troponin was always no, I rising. Mean, I mean, with the multiple trials of PCI, he's still having hope that yeah. PCI has a role here. So this is, uh, by, by the way, his carotid angiogram, uh, 
so you see this is his uh, severe stenosis in the right internal carotid. And uh, so uh, I don't know uh, if you are interested in uh, this uh, DSA, but anyway. So let's proceed with the intervention. So for the CTO for the uh, Ramus, it was uh, uh, easily uh, crossed and just pre-dilated and do an, uh, 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 stenting. And this is the angiogram after the opening the ramus. Now, should we open the LAD uh, CTO? With the echo finding of uh, high echinesias of the Echinesia septum and, and the suspense. apical, so what Sus do you think? Uh, suspicion uh, of uh, apical LV. Should we go us. for LAD or well, just leave it for medical? If he's symptomatic, I mean, well, the number one reason nowadays that we do for C2 intervention is symptoms. Okay. And symptoms, according to the, your intervention written by DeMario just a week ago, so a lot of people with CTO, 70% of them actually would have shortness of breath. This mm. is the article published uh, a week ago in Euro Intervention. Fantastic article, review article. However, if symptomatic angina, viable, which you've already done, yeah. I think CTO and LED has to be interviewed. Well, let's see Dr. Rorid, who's, who's supporting you from the, from the audiences. Yes. Who will do the LED, guys? So you can raise your hands up if you're going to do the LED and the remaining so will leave it alone. It's only two, it's only two, come on. Okay, so, it, okay, go okay. ahead. Anyway, we did hear from all the nice speaker and expert speaker about all uh, those uh, techniques, parallel wire, retrograde, uh, uh, recrossing, uh, what microcatheter, dual lumen mi microcatheter, but I have my special approach. This is the total occlusion basic equipment for lesion, and that's called to believers. And this is the summary of um, my protocol. I only use one guiding catheter. Contralateral uh, injection is forbidden. One hydrophilic strong wire supporting with uh, uh, over the wire balloon, and uh, uh, dissection reentry is allowed and uh, then do pre-dilation and then stenting. So I was able to cross even through two layers of stents to cross the whole of this CTO and do this pre-dilation with a small balloon and then, uh, then pre-dilation with a, a larger balloon. And this is the angiogram that we had successful, although this is a totally hard uh, fibrous instant total occlusion. And then we had to stent the whole lesion. And this is, uh, we stopped the stent at the uh, bifurcation. And this is the angiogram. So we had to stent from the ostial LAD to the left main. So I preferred here, since uh, there are just to do a little tap. So I put a, a short stent. And uh, this is the stenting uh, with the tap and then uh, this is the angiogram, and I did kissing, fi final kissing. So uh, I think w w we are done here, but uh, uh, this is uh, the final angiogram. This is a fixed frame picture. Uh, and this is another uh, angiogram with a fixed frame picture. Now, uh, some people say, well, do you check the circumflex? I, did, uh, I thought it's 50%, uh, but instead of doing FFR, just I took the wire from the ramus. This is the wire in the ramus. I took the same wire from the uh, uh, ramus and put it in uh, the circumflex. So easy coming from the ramus with the, an old wire, that's an indication that the scent is well opposed and there is no significant osteal. Uh, stenosis. So to continue, that's uh, our topic. Uh, this is I, I showed uh, uh, one-stop shopping. Just uh, one week uh, uh, later, I did uh, do his carotid stenting, and two weeks later, I did open his uh, coronary, uh, sorry, uh, uh, SFA uh, CTO. So this was a true uh, one-stop shopping to open everything. Okay, I hope that you, I showed you this. Uh, Thank you. Time.